The community needs to pick who the superintendent is or it's just going to go back to business as usual. We don't want you to pick an outsider to be the superintendent. We're going to pick the superintendent. The frustration was abundantly clear in this standing room only crowd at a community forum in Englewood. The Chicago Police Board invited residents to weigh in on who should be the next police superintendent. This is part of Mayor Emanuel's new effort at transparency. He's come under bitter attack over the city's clumsy handling of the now infamous police dash cam video showing the death of 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. Now we've got the Laquan McDonald video. Okay, and the shocking thing about that is all the so-called good officers who stood by and watched and let it happen. Since that video first became public, City Hall has lurched from crisis to crisis. Emanuel fired Chicago Police Chief Gary McCarthy after first promising to have his back. That was followed by weeks of protests and calls for Mayor Emanuel and state's attorney Anita Alvarez to step down. The mayor said he welcomed a Justice Department investigation of the Chicago Police Department after first calling the idea misguided. I have no intentions of resigning. There is no reason for me to resign. People had to vote. They made a decision, and I'm going to execute the responsibilities with being the mayor and be accountable for the decisions I make and be responsible for making those decisions. Instead, the mayor began trying to repair the damage. One week after the release of the McDonald video, the mayor announced a new task force on accountability. Days later, Emanuel named former federal prosecutor Sharon Fairley to head the city board that reviews police misconduct. For some community leaders, the changes are too little, too late. Chris Harris is the pastor at Bright Star Church of God in Christ in Chicago's Bronzeville neighborhood. There's frustration, there's anger, and most importantly, uh, there's disappointment. But uh, when we really look at it, there's trauma as well. So the community is at a place of unrest, and I think we need to make sure that we step up to the plate to heal those harms and hurts. But by late December, the mayor's own apologies for police misconduct fell flat. That's when another police shooting rocked Chicago. An officer responding to a domestic assault shot and killed 19-year-old Quintonio Legreer, who was allegedly attacking his father with a baseball bat. A bystander, 55-year-old Betty Jones, was also killed. Police are calling her shooting accidental. Family and friends were outraged. Are you got to shoot first and ask questions later? It's ridiculous. Um, it feels painful um, for our city that this happened. Lori Lightfoot is president of the Chicago Police Board, a group of civilians appointed by the mayor to discipline officers and offer guidance on police policy. We examine, as we will, what does use of force mean? What are the circumstances in which that should happen? And is the focus on sanctity of life as it should be? Just days after more protests erupted over the shooting deaths of Jones and Legreer, Mayor Emanuel cut short his vacation in Cuba and rushed back to Chicago. On December 30th, he announced more changes, including training more police officers in the use of tasers, promising that every police car responding to incidents have access to tasers. Our goal as a city must always be to ensure the safety of everyone involved. To do that, we must ensure that our officers have the right tactics, the right training, the right technology to resolve tense situations safely and securely. WLS Radio's Bill Cameron, a veteran City Hall reporter, says officers need to be held accountable for their actions and those of other officers. There needs to be placed in the mind of all officers that City Hall and the various police misconduct agency watchdogs don't have their back, that they do need to behave and respect the civil rights of whoever they're confronting on the street. But Mayor Emanuel is still reeling from the political fallout and 3,000 pages of heavily redacted emails uncovered by journalists show City Hall scrambling to head off a crisis, emails that at least raise the possibility of a political cover-up. 
a politician's instinct usually is to cover up. So it's probable that there was a cover up? Ask me if I can find a smoking gun? Not yet. But the feds are crawling all over it, and if there is one out there, they will find it. Right now, we've heard in this city loud and clear that there is a large contingent of folks in particular neighborhoods, um, but I think it's, you know, the sentiment is, is, is broad spread, that they have lost confidence and faith in the police department. That message has been delivered very loud and clear. Fire Rob now! Fire Rob now! Despite all the calls for his resignation, Mayor Emanuel has insisted he is not going anywhere, and his term extends until 2019. If the election were Tuesday, he couldn't be elected dog catcher. But he's got time. And if he can show in this time that he has tried hard and made actual improvements, he's re-electable.